Recently, Eric July from Young Ripper YouTube, as well as the Ripperverse comic books, joined my channel. We had a nice conversation. We also had a live stream. And he talked about one of the reasons that he dropped modern comics altogether, and really the main reason, because he was absolutely fed up with comic book events. He was finishing up War of the Realms, which in itself was a big disappointment. And it was overlapping, I believe, with Absolute Carnage. And he said, enough is enough. Why do we have multiple comic book events that are supposed to be important happening at the exact same time at Marvel Comics? And I think a lot of people are feeling that frustration. One of the real big issues just destroying comic books lately, especially Marvel and DC, is this weird over-reliance on events. They really don't mean anything anymore. Nothing really changes. Basically, they put the universe back exactly the way that they found it. And it makes for a very unsatisfying experience, especially with some of these DC and Marvel events being so enormous. You could spend upwards of like $80 to $100 if you wanted to fully invest, not in variant covers or anything like that, but just buying the main series and all the tie-ins that come along with it. And I don't know. I do not know what's going on, but this might be one of the signs of the apocalypse. Every once in a while, CBR.com are making sense when it comes to the comic book industry. Recently, there was an article from Ashley Land talking about how bad comic book events have gotten and had some really good examples. And I said, you know what? I just talked to Eric July. Let's get into this bad boy and talk about how this has done so much long-term damage. At one time in comic book history, even the biggest events didn't ripple through every title. Events like Crisis on Infinite Earths and Secret Wars did affect each company's main ongoing books, but any narrative intrusions really lasted longer than a couple of issues. Today, events are more chaotic and sprawling than they've ever been, and they can last a very long time. Fans have slowly caught on to the fact that, as a rule, most event tie-in books don't matter. These comic book events could benefit a great deal from scaling down and simplifying their stories for the readers. In fact, I would take that one step further. Most of these comic book events should not be comic book events. They should be self-contained stories. They are essentially story arcs that they just add a bunch of crap onto so they can say it's an event, make up a bunch of number one issues and Alpha and Omega and all this other crap and add a few tie-ins to it and hope and pray that they can improve their bottom line and maybe keep their job for a couple more days longer. That's all this is. War of the Realms never should have been an event. That was a Thor story arc. Should there have been some characters outside of Thor that show up during War of the Realms? Well, yes, because it was a key storyline that had been set up. When you talk about Absolute Carnage, which I personally enjoyed, that shouldn't have been an event either. That should have been a Venom story arc. That's essentially what it was, but they blew it up because Venom was really popular, the sales were good, and they needed anything to juice the numbers over there at Marvel Comics. But when you get to the end of Absolute Carnage, what happens? Noel finally wakes up and he's heading back to Earth and it doesn't really even end. It just sets up the next big event, which is actually King and Black, which needed to be an event. There was actually an interview with Jordan D. White, the group editor from Marvel Comics. And when he's sitting there and he needs an idea for an event, he actually just takes a storyline from Kieran Gillen or Al Ewing and they blow it up into an event. And that's why none of these things work anymore. The article continues, in Dark Crisis, DC way down a perfectly enjoyable central miniseries with unpopular tie-ins such as Young Justice. These stories were almost entirely disassociated from Joshua Williamson's narrative and became completely redundant as a result. All the same, readers felt compelled to add them to their pull list. The importance DC had assigned to the overall event, beginning with the death of the Justice League, seemed to demand it. However, these extra books didn't add much to the main story, and they distracted from what could have been a tightly focused, thrilling tale. Didn't add much to the main story. They added absolutely nothing to the main story. When you go and read that Dark Crisis Young Justice miniseries, which is an abomination, it's basically just a smaller version of what's going on in Dark Crisis. Because not only does it really have nothing whatsoever to really do with Dark Crisis, it's not like the bad guy from Dark Crisis is also in this Young Justice miniseries. It's Mr. Mitzelplex's kid. Mickey Mitzelplek or, or something stupid like that, just doing the exact same thing that's happening in the real event. But the writer of the miniseries, Megan Fitzmartin, who's the worst writer outside of probably Teen Franklin in all of big two comic books, basically just used it as a sounding board to talk crap on Peter David's Young Justice run and run down the male heroes while trying to uplift the female heroes and basically not taking into consideration any of the history, any of the stories of the characters, and basically bastardize everything. Well, guess what? 
Everyone hated it. No one liked that miniseries whatsoever. And it's always going to say Dark Crisis, Young Justice. It didn't even need to exist. And it really brought down Dark Crisis, which in and of itself probably shouldn't have existed either because it was basically just a redux of Dark Knight's death metal, but done at a much less competent scale because Joshua Williamson just isn't Scott Snyder. Because let's face it, you know, Joshua Williamson's had like three or four attempts at making an event happen at DC Comics and none of them have been successful. And yet somehow he's doing Night Terrors, which is coming up in the not too distant future. Another good reason to talk about this topic, because Night Terrors is the ultimate jumping off point for fans interested in DC Comics when they actually have three or four good comic books, which are worth reading, which they haven't had in probably two years. It's absolutely insane. Marvel and DC have entered a period where comic book titles are regularly interrupted by many events like Hulk vs. Thor Banner of War. These typically last no more than 10 issues, encompassing at least two series beginning with an alpha issue and ending with an omega issue. While some of these smaller events are decent reads, they've left fans wondering if anything beyond marketing sets them apart from other typical story arcs. Increasingly, these one-shots and tie-in books have no meaningful impact on the wider event. It's just an excuse to manufacture number one issues, that really shouldn't exist in the first place. Hulk versus Thor, Banner of War, is just a series crossover. These things are commonplace in, in DC Comics and Marvel Comics history, but they act like these events are like World War Hulk or Flashpoint or something like that, and people have caught on. There's no value in these number one issues other than bringing some speculators in who are just going to be disappointed when they find out that the comic book has no value outside of that because it turns out Hulk versus Thor, Banner of War is just a pretty decent story. The juice is not worth the squeeze at this point, and they just keep going back to this, and they've diminished their sales, and they've ran so many people off because events don't feel important. There's far too much woke content in comic books. There's far too many reboots. And then the cycle just picks up, and it gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And everything, any story that anyone conceivably comes up with at Marvel or DC Comics is now a candidate to be in an event series with an Alpha and an Omega issue and about 50 billion different variant covers because they've actually driven off all the people that want to read the stories at this point. There's basically nothing to these anymore. They're, they're just empty shells. There's no way Night Terrors is going to be worth anything. There's no way Fall of X is going to be worth anything in the end because the writing sucks. The stories aren't compelling, and there's no one sticking around except for speculators and a couple of hangers-on wishing things hadn't ended. Now, this last point that the writer of the article makes is one I can absolutely get behind. It affected me personally during the example that they talk about. The tie-in problem extends well beyond simple diminishing returns of events and the way they devalue tie-ins. It also runs the risk of completely derailing ongoing comics. For example, the widely praised modern classic Robert Menditti's run on Hawkman started as a space odyssey in quest to Hawkman's past lives. However, it was interrupted by Year the Villain in an arc that transformed Hawkman into Sky Tyrant courtesy of the Batman Who Laughs serum. This nine-issue arc represented one-third of Venditti's entire series. While some of it felt pertinent to Venditti's story, Year of the Villain derailed a lot of careful storytelling. In the end, Hawkman's own series replaced him in the middle of one of his greatest stories. Absolutely, this is one of the most egregious examples of an event that should have existed in the first place because Year of the Villain wasn't even a story. It was a concept forced on all the writers by Scott Snyder so he could, I know, value up or get more playtime for his Batman Who Last character that I absolutely, absolutely hate. I just don't even get me on that one. And the Hawkman series at the time was absolutely phenomenal. It might be the best work of Robert Venditti's comic book writing career. And his Exo Man of War volumes one through three are my favorite comic book story of all times. And I think what he was doing in Hawkman was even better because it was beyond what the author is talking about there. Yes, it was certainly a space odyssey, and they were certainly exploring aspects of the character of Hawkman and how he exists throughout space and time and all this stuff. But it was also this amazing redemption story to where Hawkman had to redeem himself after all the misery that he had caused in a past life. That's why he kept being reincarnated to make up for his past sins or whatever. And then when he finally does it, he essentially turns into the devil. It made no sense, and it ruined a series that was doing something that would probably be talked about as one of the greatest comic book runs you know, of the 21st century or whatever. And guess what happened during Year of the Villain when the Sky Tyrant stuff happened? Robert Menditti, my favorite writer in the world, I dropped it. I didn't want to read it anymore. 
because it interrupted something that was important to me, it interrupted something that I like. Now, Robert Venditti is a great writer, and he was able to take this Year of the Villain concept and do the best that he could with it. As far as all the Year of the Villain stuff, Robert Venditti's was the best. But guess what? I didn't want to read any of it, and I was so pissed off, I ended up having to drop the book. Comic book events are so played out in 2023, there is no real value add anymore. No one expects any type of long-term change. Everyone sees through all the marketing gimmicks that you're just trying to make new number one issues appear out of thin air. No one wants to read the tie-ins, the miniseries that are associated with them. And they're all like overlapping now. Marvel sometimes now, which is even worse than what really drove off Eric July in the first place, will have three or four comic events going at the exact same time. Worse yet, they'll have mainstay characters from the 616 like Spider-Man in both events happening at the same time. And at this point, events are doing far more harm than good in comic books. I definitely want to hear from you guys. What do you think about comic book events? Have they driven you away? Have they forced you to stop a run that you love? Now, I did talk about Robert Venditti's Hawkman, which I think is absolutely brilliant. And it's likely the greatest Hawkman run of all time. If you're interested in the character or maybe you hadn't heard of this one yet and you want to sell job on it, actually broke it all down why this is one of the best comic runs in modern DC history. Definitely check this one out right here. There's also a link in the video description.